learning more about the planning that went into the attack from Hamas. Joining me right now, new exclusive reporting from Anna Schechter, a member of NBC News's investigations unit. So, Anna, how did NBC News obtain these documents and, and what light did they shed on, on what went into the planning? So, Lindsay, in the hours and in the early days directly after the terrorist attack on these kibbutzim and on the music festival just over the border with Gaza, the IDF, as well as other first responder organizations like Zaka, went in and took information on the deaths, um, took notes on what they were seeing, murdered children, women, families killed together, and they also found the bodies of Hamas terrorists who were killed during the violence. And on the bodies of those Hamas terrorists in pockets were, were these documents. And so the first responders recovered them and photographed them. And currently, the IDF is reviewing a trove of documents. And a source within the Israeli government passed the documents that we reported on to me, and we analyzed them and put out the news last night. What are some of the most disturbing allegations? Obviously, a warning to, to our viewers that the details are difficult, but what, what sticks out to you? Well, the directive to take hostages and kill as many people as possible, those were two bullet points on one of the pages that an NBC News translator translated into English from Arabic. But also there was an the old Da'at school the new Da'at school and a youth center that were on bullet points. Search the school number one, search number, school number two, search the youth center. Then sources also told me that dining halls, dental offices were marked on these maps and were targets. Another directive was to surround and gather hostages within a dining hall. It was so detailed that one Hamas unit was to take the hostages and hand them off to a second Hamas unit. There were even details about how many motorbikes would approach in one unit, how many Jeeps, four motorbikes, then two Jeeps, four motorbikes, then two Jeeps. So the detail is really unprecedented. And what my sources have told me is that this is um, unprecedented to find this detailed account and this intelligence on the bodies of the attackers. Just so brutal, um, just the details, just so emotional. I want to ask you, you have a new special report on NBCNews.com about the music festival that everybody's been hearing about, where people who were there, attendees who were able to escape with their lives, call themselves sitting ducks. They were just celebrating a music festival for a Jewish holiday, and Hamas came in and opened fire. We've seen a lot of the images, but this reporting is just incredible. What do you want people at home? And I encourage everybody um, to look at it when they have a chance and they're in the emotional headspace where they can. But what do you want people to take away from that detailed reporting? Well, from interviews with family members, interviews with survivors, and reviewing hours of footage put together, a compilation of everything that was put out on social media, this was an all-night party that Israelis called a nature party. And it was trance music. There were 3,000 people. And what people want to get out is that these people had nothing to do with politics, mm -hmm. nothing to do with the military. This was about a big celebration that many of them had been looking forward to for months. And the fact that they were unarmed and were really just there dancing at an outdoor concert. And the brutality that's described going bush to bush, tree to tree, shooting um, mostly young people uh, who were there to just enjoy time and music with their friends. Um, one of the organizers described to me how she actually was able to get into a Jeep. It was her boss's car. She thanks God that the vehicle could withstand what she then drove into, which was an ambush. Mm -hmm. Her car stalled, and she describes to me getting it into reverse and being able to drive away, even though six uh, armed men, Hamas terrorists, were shooting into her car and wounded the three people who were sitting in her back seat. Thankfully, they all survived, but were taken to the hospital.